After all this time, I never thought I'd walk our halls again. It is immaculate. There is no trace of the filth that has infected this world. The curious sculpture comes alive as you reach out to touch it. It thrums with power and throws flickering dancing shadows against the walls. The carving is covered in strange glyphs that feel oddly familiar. They surround a gently glowing stone that makes you think of the night sky rolled into a ball. Trying to read the symbols, you hear a faint whispering at the back of your mind, as if you're listening to the echoes of a past age. Your mind swims, and, for a moment, the glyphs become clear. You read, Our first lord's babes with power glowed, our seconds born in blood that flowed, our thirds young to the wind return, our fourths to glowing flames adjourn. Our fifth lord's cubs with minds were blessed, our sixths had brawn beyond the rest. Our seventh brood spread from earth to glen, and thus no king shall rise again. You try to hold your focus as the whispering echo fades, but the letters waver, contorting and merging until they're nothing but meaningless glyphs once more. A riddle from the past, or maybe a riddle about the past. I know what I need to do now. What a way to die. Down here in this darkness. Poor soul. and Delius, poet and patron god of the elves. Duna, the stoutest of the seven. No wonder the dwarves pray to him. Blessed Zolstis, an elegant god for our elegant people. It's Amadia, the mother of wizards. God of the Orcs, Vrogir. Huh. Zantetsa, the goddess of mirth, worshipped by imps. Ralic. I used to pray. Well, that wasn't right. Strange. I've never seen anything like this before. It's Amadia, the mother of wizards. Delius, poet and patron god of the elves. Duna, the stoutest of the seven. No wonder the dwarves Blessed pray to him. An elegant god for our elegant people. Huh. Zantetsa, the goddess of mirth, the god of the orcs, Vrogir. Rather, I used to pray to you when I was young. That's it, we're through.
What in the name of Lucian's prize pig is going on here? I wonder what they did in life to deserve such a resting place. As the creature crawls from the sarcophagus, you hear a gasp of breath. Fane steps forward, never taking his eyes off her. I... I must speak to her. It is vital. Please, stand aside. You hear a gasp from the creature as Fane steps forward. It speaks in a hissing, clicking language that seems both completely alien and somewhat familiar. Fane raises his head and responds in the same jolting, clicking tongue. He seems to be pleading with the creature, his hands outstretched. The creature looks down at him and shrieks in rage. Her gestures are quick, strong and violent. Whatever she said, it seems to have devastated your friend. The verbal barrage continues, but something changes within Fane. He looks up and golden light pours from his skull. When he speaks next, you understand every word, but you're not sure the words are his own. Aetira, Aetira. I had hoped to see you turn to dust in this tomb. Alone, forgotten, with only your secrets for comfort. Lady Amadia? You're... you possess him. Have you fallen so far that you seek shelter within that? Does your vessel even know what you did? The war you started? The greed and avarice that saw you betray the Eternals? The glow fades, and Fane seems to return to himself. He staggers slightly, exhausted by everything that's happened. The creature turns away from him, and, panting, turns to you. The creature looks down from its perch, trembling. It crawled out of that sarcophagus as if it had forgotten how to move its limbs. It turns to you, and you see its face is covered by an intricate mask. From behind its unmoving lips, you hear a noise. It starts as a groaning, croaking chatter, but slowly becomes more distinct. It's speaking. May Saravel te de laruntu, Shamari. The stream of noise cuts off abruptly. After a moment, you hear a jolting, lurching voice. It wears the face of Ralek, but speaks the tongue of beasts. How cruel. I suspected the Seven Lords won the war after they locked me here, but seeing their faces on dumb creatures, a depressing confirmation. Gods? What is this senseless braying? The Seven Lords were Eternals, just as I am. Deep within your soul, you feel your god stirring at the sound of the voice. You can feel its anger and fear swelling inside you. The creature leans forward to get a better look at you, clucking and tutting under her breath. It seems to be a simple form at its core, a source that. A walking, unfortunately talking, source that. I wonder... How to extract the source from the vessel without... <gasps> she pulls back suddenly, recoiling in horror. It... it is rotting. Almost imperceptibly, but it decays before my eyes. It does not even have a century left. The god within you reacts. His emotions a cocktail of fury and fear. You hear his voice, demanding that you give him control, demanding your body obey his will. Etera, you worm. An eternity locked away was too good for you. I should have seen you ground to dust and fed to the wind. Your heresies deserve nothing less. The figure recoils, as if struck. Relic? What... what happened to you? Did you truly fall so far? Silence! It is your king that has fallen. He and all the other eternal cowards were flung into the void. And the power you were too scared to hunt has made me a god. And yet here you stand. Small, weak, decaying. I will not even need the Aetiran to grind you into the dust. You feel your god freeze at the mention of this Aetiran, a cold terror settling in your chest. The beast's unruly passenger did not deign to tell it. He did not want his host to know I crafted a weapon that would leave him an eternal once more. You feel your god thrashing against your control. 
Where? You croak in a voice, not quite your own. Ah, of course you never found it. You always lacked imagination, my lord. I hid it in these very caves, although I can feel its distance now. Someone has uncovered it. Perhaps they intend to flay the godliness from you. No matter. Given your pathetic state, it is mine to collect at my leisure. As for you, you monstrosity, you were designed to be defective. You were built to die. And I rather think it is time you fulfilled your function. But do not fear. I shall put your sauce to good use.
They're in the void. The Seven threw them to the void. They damned them to that. To an eternity of torment. And they did it in my name. They did it because of me. Aren't I? If you open the gate and let a mad dog loose, are you not responsible if it savages a child? I gave them my research on the Vale. I gave them a prize to snatch from the King. Worse, I gave them a weapon to use against their own people. The source of the Vale would have made them unimaginably powerful. And their theft left enough of a crack for the Void to pour in. Every wickedness visited on my people. Every evil that stalks this land. It was my fault. That... That is a surprising spurt of logic from one of your kind. I cannot sit here and just wish for death. I must carry on. For my people. For my family. My loved ones may be gone. The Seven may be corrupt, but I remain. The last true Eternal must survive. And perhaps, just perhaps, I can find a way to bring my people back. Fane grips you by the arm, his hands strong. Come, Godwoken. There is work to be done. The masked creature grunts three times at the sight of you. It reaches its arm out. Clasped in its hand is a crumpled parchment. You take the page, and the servant returns to its hollow existence. Keyhole, no handle. There must be a hidden mechanism. This is quite the antiques collection. with source here. forgotten by all involved. Don't give it a second thought. Riker's mouth widens into a tight smile. Oh, how unfortunate. We could have been such good friends.
reason for that, I reckon. Someone wants my head. of wisdom somewhere in these dusty books. My source powers draining my the nearest lucky day. Touch. A third Evil pyramid is truly a material of the void. This is quite the antiques collection. She hums quietly. The notes move in rhythm with her wandering eyes. The lizard pauses, and a smile crosses her face. Me belongs to me. Servants belong to the hall. That's the way I like it. Her hum returns, soft at first, then blossoming into a full-fledged hymn. Ten spans under, human slept. Ten spans up, the dwarves were kept. The dusty staircase leads to another hatch, which is blocked tight. Straining and grunting, your strength just about manages to nudge open the hatch. The spider spindles right up to you, her long, long legs tickling the sandy floor. A malevolent intelligence gleams forth from eight beady eyes. She opens her mouth, hissing at you. Don't you know, my little pepper pot, that is ever such bad manners to enter a queen's boudoir without permission. But what's this? Something familiar beats within your heart? A venom promise, a gift from one of my kind. She shuffles her enormous body closer, looming over you until you are enveloped under her shadow. Venom sizzles to the sand from her fangs as you are pinned in place under all eight of her eyeballs. You come here for me. You desire another spider's kiss. How rude you are, sugar plum. But I'm not interested in you like that. I've already got plenty of babies. So you are still prey, but of a different kind. I hunger. And I hear my princelings blubbering in their loving cocoons. Time for us to feast. Her fangs drool venom that sizzles on the sand. But there's no time to think about all that, because raising up on her hind legs, she pounces right at you. <laughs>
Before you stands the ghost of an older woman. Clad in flowing magister's robes, she peers around the room as if looking for something lost. On seeing you, she brightens and extends an ethereal hand. Magister Pavlonia, charmed to meet you, I'm sure. Your hand passes right through hers. She shrieks, horror animating her face. Oh, my hand! My, my fingers! Well, really, I'm quite aware of that. But I am not fully myself. I keep forgetting things somehow. It's hard to hold all the threads together when you've fallen apart yourself. Wait, the spider! It was the spider! She chewed me. Bits of me. Slowly. I keep looking, but I can't find myself. I, ah, uh, yes. I came from the Black Pits to, to negotiate with Riker here in his house. We needed to ensure that scoundrel wouldn't interfere with our plans there. He must have mixed something into the delightful rose tea he served me. And then, then, ah, next I knew I was rolled up in webbing as the... His spider sucked the marrow right from my bones and nibbled my limbs off. I hope you didn't drink any tea downstairs. He's a master sorcerer. Everyone knows that. But he's too powerful to take to the joy. And besides, he had some business that coincided with Dallas's interests. Of course, if he were to act up, we could always work on his little vulnerability to fortify. So Dallas ordered him left alone, providing he didn't interfere with Magister business in the Black Pits. She throws you a haughty glance. In the sharp lines of her face, you see steely determination overtaking the spirit's distracted manner. None of your... Never mind. She stands stock still and looks into your eyes. There is no hint of pleading, no cries for mercy, just unforgiving judgment. As you consume her spirit, you feel her coldness seep within you, deep into your bones. 